your brand, your architecture, your creativity, GLLS. Hey guys, it's Jamie here from GLLS. Uh, today we're going to connect the Digidot C4 Extended uh, to the computer. We're going to walk through the Digidot interface for setup and then the uh, second interface for control, uh, some simple controls. So first things first, let's go over here to network and internet settings. Uh, second, you will go to Ethernet. Uh, once it's plugged into the computer, uh, change adapter options. Go into Ethernet, properties, and under properties, go to Internet Protocol version 4. Um, it will be selected as obtain an IP address automatically. Just please click use the following IP address. We'll be using 10.0.0.1. And when you click down, over the subnet mask, it will automatically populate that for you. It'll be 255.0.0.0. Press OK. Close out all of the windows. Uh, next, we'll be going into Google Chrome. Um, in the URL, please select 10.254.254.254. That'll bring you to the Digidot C4 interface uh, for setup. So by default, the username is admin, and the password is admin as well. I'll show you guys how to change that a little bit later. Uh, so it'll show you the MAC address of the actual Digidot. Uh, if you don't have the interface open, you can see what the MAC address is if you just turn the C4 uh, over. Uh, on the back of it, it has the MAC address there. Um, so first thing, we'll configure it in the settings, and then we'll go through all the other options a bit later. So in the actual interface, so in settings, you have network over here. Uh, your device name, you can change it to whatever you want. We'll just call it C4. Uh, the IP address, I just put that to 10.0.0.2. Uh, so it does have to match the actual IP address that we put into the Ethernet. Uh, and then your subnet mask is going to be 255.0.0.0 as we did in the Ethernet settings. And your gateway is 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Uh, so you want to save this network settings. Next, this is the Wi Fi settings. So right now, uh, as default, the Wi Fi is disabled. So enable the Wi Fi just by clicking that button. Um, we are going to go to Client. So if you have your own Wi-Fi network, uh, you want to click on client uh, under network name. Uh, so press refresh on the right to scan. So let's click that. And then you can see that it's searching for the network. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, just this one here. And just Type in your password. And then press save. So the Wi Fi settings have been updated. Uh, so your IP address has to match your Wi Fi network. Uh, everything except for the last digit. So the dot one here uh, would be incorrect. So how you would check that is you would go into your search bar here. Uh, an easy way to do that is just go to your command prompt, IP config, and that will show you your IP address right here. So you, we want to copy this one here. So we'll copy that. You want to put that in your IP address here. Again, you want to change the last digit to uh, any digit between 1 and 255. So we'll just do one more up. Uh, we'll use 26. Uh, your subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. And your gateway, you can just leave that at 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. Okay, we'll save the Wi Fi settings. So now I can access all of this menu through Wi Fi uh, and access the Digidot through Wi Fi if my phone is on the same Wi Fi network and my computer. Um, Alright, so we're going to go to the middle here, uh, the input and output. So as you can see, they're labeled uh, to the ports that are actually on the Digidot. So D1, 2, 3, and 4. 
uh, your out input would be Artnet because that's coming out of the computer, so Ethernet, and your output will be selected by the IC type. Um, I'll be using the Vividus 270 pixel light, uh, just RGB, and the UC or the IC type would be UCS 2903. So I'll select that. Over here, you have your drop-down menu that says Universes. So once you click that, you can then add a universe. Um, basically, the limit is three universes per port uh, for the Digidot, but depends on what you have uh, capable, like the capability of your actual Digidot. Uh, depends on how many universes you could put. This one here is an extended one, so I only have one universe to use. Uh, so once we click the Add button, it gives you universe and channel count. Let's be using one universe. And we will save the IO options. I'll tell you that this is now saved. If you want to test that this is working uh, with your lights, if you click the, the D1, the D2, D3, or D4, it'll actually light all of the channels uh, that are on that port. So if you have um, just a run of light connected to D1 and you have selected everything correctly, it'll actually illuminate. Um, a white color uh, just so that you can see if it actually has been connected successfully before you go into uh, any other softwares. Um, so yeah that's basically the settings uh, of the C4. So if we go back and we go into accounts so again this one here your account is default as admin. You can edit this account if you want so you can change the username, change the password uh, or you can actually add another user. So if you do want to keep or multiple users, um, which they would have their own logins and they can do their own settings, um, that is available as well. Um, so over here is your scenes. Um, so right now I have just a couple of scenes here, something like color scroll, test scene, uh, red. So all the scenes that you record are actually here in this, uh, in this interface underneath the scene. You can add your own color scroll, you can record a scene, and you can refresh scenes. Uh, and then we'll show you how to trigger them a little bit. Um, the recorder over here is, it actually records the ArtNet signal coming in. Right now I don't have any ArtNet signal coming into the C4, because it's just connected to the computer. and It doesn't have any third-party software running ArtNet signal. So if you had something like Madrix and you're recording a scene, uh, the scene has to be playing on Magix, and then you just prepare the record buffer. Again, right now it doesn't say any universe is selected. So if I select this, uh, the U1 over here, uh, and then press the prepare record buffer, um, then you you can record it, and you can select to loop it to blend the scene so it, it looks seamless, uh, and then it will loop for as many times uh, until you actually tell it to do something else or turn the device off. Um, the trigger options over here. Uh, so we do have a couple triggers that we can create here. So if you add a trigger, uh, you make a trigger title. Uh, let's go power up. Uh, then you choose whatever trigger you want. So you can do a power up trigger. So when uh, there's power that comes into the actual digidot, then you could tell it to do uh, start the playlist of all the scenes you have, uh, specifically start a certain scene. Um, you could have it uh, do previous scene, uh, basically whatever you want it to do. Um, same with analog, the onboard switch time trigger, you can uh, set times per scene. So if you want certain scenes to play at certain times of the day, uh, or even uh, a certain date on the calendar, you can do that as well. Uh, you can do things like HTTP, uh, UDP, you can do ArtNet and DMX if the ArtNet and DMX set on the input. So if you had ArtNet and DMX input, um, then you can trigger it from a light board or something simple like that. Um, Alright, so that's triggering. Um, browser, so you can actually browse your computer uh, for any scene. So for example if you send a scene to uh, say one of your customers or to anyone you can just email them the scene that you recorded 
and then you can upload it to another Digidot if you want. Uh, same with firmware updates, scenes, any triggers that you might have, uh, etc. So this is just the, the browser, just how you access your computer through the interface. Uh, over here is update. So it's always good to update your Digidot whenever um, it prompts you to. So on the update window right here, it'll actually have uh, exclamation point in red. Um, that tells you to uh, to give your Digidot an update. So you just come in here and you hit update. There's two ways to update, uh, as you can see on this yellow uh, tag up here. You can update the device from here. If the update fails, then you can download the firmware from their actual website, and then you can install it using the Digidot update page. Um, over here is your license. So you can actually upgrade your Digidot. So right now, we're using uh, Digidot Extended 1. It has one universes. I can then go and upgrade the license and uh, that allow me to have more universes if I save uh, it more. The Artnet and DMX Watcher. So I can actually look at my uh, the signals coming into the actual universe. So if I was playing a scene here, um, you'll see 0 to 255 on each channel that you have here. Again, we have 512 channels, so you can actually watch what your scene is doing uh, on the actual Digidot, um, if necessary. Um, this here is just your backup window, so you can back up the device in case you have to uh, reset the device if it resets itself, if there's something that goes wrong with the actual firmware. Uh, you can then restore it, uh, this window here. This here is uh, your fader. So this one here is just a master fader, which would dim the actual light. Um, it's the only fader that's uh, available right here. Uh, so again, you can just dim the, the output of the Digidot. And if you have any questions or anything, there is um, a startup guide. And uh, yeah, so this is window here, you just click on it, and it will take you to the, uh, the guide or if you have any questions. Uh, takes you to the website. Uh, now the other interface that I was going to show is just interface.digidot.eu. So this one here looks exactly like the phone app. Uh, it's just here on the browser. So you can do the same things I'm about to show you on their actual phone app as well. Um, so you can go into your settings, you can change the in and out configurations like I showed you in the settings of the other uh, interface. Um, you have some device settings, you can change the licenses, you can update it all from this uh, this interface as well. So you can do this on your phone too. Um, but what's great about this is you can create your own scenes. So if I wanted to, instead of recording the actual scene, generate a scene, uh, you can do static color example if I just click on this uh, I can choose any color so let's just choose yellow for example I can change the saturation so I can turn it to a white light if I want uh, you can change the brightness as well so you can dim it from this option and once you've selected your color just click, uh, click the check mark you do have to name the actual scene before you can save it or generate it so we'll just name this yellow uh, generate it. So once we created that scene, if we go back two scenes, it'll actually be here. So if I click this, the lights are turning yellow. And I can just trigger anything from either this interface or the app that's on the phone as well. Um, and then this here actually tells you how long the scenes are and uh, what the size of the scenes are. Uh, you can go and delete scenes as well, and, and you can change the brightness just up here at the top. Uh, you can change all the triggers that I uh, showed you in the other interface. You can create them here and manage them. Um, so if you want to delete all triggers, uh, you can do that up here on this button. Um, but yeah, so you can create all the, uh, the triggers that we mentioned before. 
another thing that you can do in the create is a, a color scroll or even a test scene. That's a very simple uh, setup. This one here, you can actually change what universe you're controlling or what fixture you're controlling. It actually populates all the channels that are attached to the Digidot, um, and it is only RGB. So if you're using an RGBW light, uh, you cannot really control it from here uh, because it's only a three-channel system. Uh, they are coming out with an update, I believe, at the end of October, which should fix most of these uh, and be able to use four channel and possibly be able to tell the Digidot what light you want to control if you have multiple lights that want to be different colors or different scenes. Um, but they do have color scroll here, which you can change um, each individual color and you can add colors so you can have multiple. Uh, it's good for chasing effects for the pixel. Uh, you can change the color width. So pixels would actually be every cutting unit and the speed is the pixels per frame rate. Uh, so again, that change those two here. You can do direction as well. So top to bottom or bottom to top. And again, you have to name the actual scene uh, to generate it. Uh, but that is pretty much it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, definitely go to gls.com. Uh, we can do live chat. Uh, so you can just uh, talk with our technicians uh, on the website, or you can even call us. Um, if you want to call us at 888-580-6366. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, you can also email us at support at gls.com if you have any technical questions. All right, well, thanks very much for your time, and you guys have yourself a good day.